Welcome to Excerpts from the Open Forum. On this program, we'll hear Mr. Harold Camping answering pre-recorded questions regarding issues from the Bible. Here's our first question. Good evening, Brother Camping. Uh, could you explain to me, please, Deuteronomy 20, 29, 29? Deuteronomy 25, verse 29. 29, 20. I think it's 29, 29. Oh, or, Deuteronomy 29, where it says the secret things belong to God. Yeah, explain that to me. Can you give me a couple of verses? I, I don't understand that. Oh, well, uh, let me let me read it, and I'll try to explain it. Thank you. In uh, Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, yes. it says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things that which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Now, we must remember that the Bible uh, not only talks about, uh, gives us laws as to how we are to live, uh, laws of morality. It not only gives us laws concerning uh, the wrath of God that will come upon uh, those who are not saved, uh, and uh, just a, a great many pieces of historical information uh, through which we can learn something more about God's salvation plan. But we also know the Bible has a lot to say about God himself, a lot to say about God himself. Now, God has not given us a mind to understand God. Uh, and, uh, and so that remains secret. That belongs to God. When God tells us there is one God, and in fact he uses the singular pronoun in speaking about God, I, I am Jehovah, for example. That's singular. The word Jehovah is singular. And yet, on the other hand, God speaks about God as Elohim. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's a plural word. And then after that, he said, let us make man in our image. He uses plural pronouns, and we can't reconcile that at all, not at all. That's secret. We, we are not able to, recognize, uh, to reconcile that. God has not given us mind to. Or, for example, we, we wonder, how can it be if God created Adam and Eve perfect, and he did, uh, they had no sin in them of any kind, how can it be that they fell into sin? That secret. God does not reveal that to us. That is, I'm not aware of anything in the Bible that tells us how that could have happened. How could it be that at the beginning, many of the angels headed up by Satan rebelled against God, and that has never happened again? Uh, uh, never again was there a falling away of angels after that first time. We don't know. That's secret. That belongs to God. Hi, Brother Camping. Um, yeah. I have a question for you. I I thought I learned one day that the um, the father of Moses was Aram. Amram, yes, that is what the Bible apparently says. But he Amram was married to Jochebed. That we know. The Bible is very clear. But when we work through the genealogies very carefully. There's no possibility that Amram and Jochebed were the parents of, uh, of uh, Moses. They, were, they had to be the grandparents or great-grandparents or great-grandparents. You see, there was a... Uh, if we work through the 430 years that Israel spent in Egypt, uh, God indicated that... Uh, uh, it was uh, 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 during the time of Levi, Kohath, Amram, and Aaron. Now, uh, 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 let's see. That's all of that is in uh, in Exodus chapter six, I believe. Let me turn to that a moment. I, Exodus chapter six. We read there. In, uh, in that Levi was 137 years old when he died. And when we work through the calendar carefully, we know 
that he uh, uh, he uh, was 61 years old when he came into Egypt, and so it would have been uh, 61 from 137 would have been uh, 76 years, I believe. Uh, no, I'm speaking from memory that he was in Egypt, and that he begat Kohath. And Kohath lived 133 years, and then we add 133 years to Levite's years. And then Kohath begat Amram, and he lived 137 years. And then we add another 137 years to the years of Levi and the 133 years of Kohath. And then we know that Aaron was 84 years old, I believe, when they came out of Egypt, and so we add his 84 years to Amram's, uh, 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 to uh, Amram's 137, and we get exactly 430 years. What I'm trying to say is that when we work through these numbers very accurately, we find that without a question, uh, Amram was born when a an ancestor of Moses and Aaron was born. Uh, who was either the grandfather or the great-grandfather or the great-grandfather of Moses and Aaron, but he could never have been the father of Moses and Aaron. Hey, now I need one more question, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, I hope you don't think this is too silly, um, but what happened in the Bible to make us not follow the laws that are written in Leviticus anymore? Oh, well, that's, that's a good question. You see, the laws in Leviticus that have to do with burnt offerings and blood sacrifices and, and, a lot, and feast days and so on were all pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. He, they were signs looking at the, some aspect of, of, uh, of God's salvation plan through the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and when Christ came... He was the fulfillment of all those signs, so we don't obey those signs anymore. We read about them and in order to get understanding about God's salvation plan, but we see the reality of those signs in the, what Christ did for us in being the burnt offering and being the lamb that was slain uh, uh, to pay for our sins. Is that is that basically why? Like I remember one thing in Leviticus, uh, they used to stone uh, people taken in adultery. Yes, those and were then, all those were all pictures of the fact that if we commit sin, we are under the wrath of God, typified by someone becoming stoned to death. Uh, and and uh, but now when we got into the New Testament. God gave way to the Roman law and did not call for those penalties anymore. But the but they're written about in the Bible so that we recognize that sin brings death. And while it brought uh, the physical death of stoning or the fire and brimstone coming down on Sodom and Gomorrah, or the earth opening up and Achan and his family being swallowed up. I mean, death came in various ways. But all of this was pointing to the fact that our sin is going to bring the second death, eternal damnation. And that's why we so desperately need a Savior to pay for our sins. I hope, I hope I'm not wrong in this. And if I offend anybody, forgive me. But I believe if you're a Jewish person... You you believe you still believe in the um, the first five books of the Bible? Is that the Torah? Is that well, what they call no, it? The... But but the Jewish person, if he becomes a child of God, believes in the whole Bible as the Word of God, just as a Gentile who becomes a child of God believes in the whole Bible as the Word of God. If you are part of the Jewish religion, then you believe. Uh, the Old Testament is the Word of God together with the various uh, writings of, of, of Jews that uh, they have uh, uh, also decided to have authority along with the Word of God. 
so the law the law in, in Leviticus was taken away at the birth of Jesus it was not taken away it was fulfilled by the Lord Jesus and and uh, we it's still the word of God we still read it and uh, get great spiritual blessing from it but we do not observe those particular laws they are they were shadows as we read in Colossians 1 verse 16 the new boons and the laws concerning meat and drink and Sabbath were a shadow of things to come now the substance is still there but the shadow now is gone Hi, Brother Kevin, how are you? Very well, thank you. Oh, good. I'm glad to reach you. I have a question. I, uh, my husband and I have been married for almost six years now. And before we were married, he had two children. Uh, he was not married. But I find it so very difficult being a step-parent. Uh, I, my, the other parent and I, their children's mother, we can't communicate. And I don't see anything in the scriptures that can help me to or that I found that will tell me how I'm supposed to deal with this situation because he feels a certain amount of guilt for whatever their situation was before I came along and now we're trying to build a family and a marriage and it just seems like it's it's so painful on me every day and I just don't know what to do well first of all are you saying that he was not married and you were not married but you bore two children out of wedlock and then you got married is that the idea uh, he he had two children with another lady, and he and I met and became married. We oh, had one son he, of our he own. He bore two children. Another one on the way. Yes. He bore two children outside of wedlock. Yes. And and now you are married. Yes. Well, that's... first of all, I, uh, he, when he bore the two children, he was living in adultery, and that is sin, uh, and that's just one more sin amongst the thousands of others that every human being. Uh, uh, engages in in his lifetime uh, and uh, now you got married and and uh, there's nothing wrong about having the fact that you got married because neither of you had been married before and uh, and uh, so now you live together as as those who are married and 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 never think about divorce again and and uh, uh, you are to love him as your, your husband, he is to love you as his wife. And, and how do you suggest, is there anything we can do to deal with, I mean, to being a step-parent and not being able to get along with the other parent who's involved, and it just seems like they, they come up with problems all the well, time. Well, but now that's another matter. You see, sin is never easy. Sin always brings plenty of problems. And so that means that those sons of yours or those two children, uh, they have another mother because uh, they were born out of wedlock to your husband, if I understand you correctly. So they also have a mother. And, and uh, you have to uh, deal with that situation or live with that situation. It, sin is always messy, messy. It's never easy. It's never clean. It's never nice. It leaves its uh, its uh, imprint upon us, but but you have to live in the assurance that uh, uh, if he's a child of God, his sins have all been paid for. If you're a child of God, your sins have been paid for, and now you try to live as children of God in love and in uh, kindness and and uh, and showing mercy to the other lady, whoever she may be. Uh, and, and kindness to her, uh, but uh, but uh, yet uh, uh, he is not to have any romantic ideas toward her. Now that's if he has romantic ideas toward her. Well, because after all, he was he at one time did romance her uh, when he was living in adultery with her, and if that still continues, that of course further complicates it because then it means that. He is guilty of, like we read in Matthew 5, that if any man looks at a woman uh, uh, in, with lust in his heart, he's already committed adultery with her. That would mean that he would still be living in adultery with her, even though he's married to you. You are listening to excerpts from the Open Forum on Family Radio. 
Mr. Harold Camping is answering pre-recorded questions about the Bible. If you'd like to hear more of Mr. Camping's teaching, you can hear and even download open forum broadcasts, Bible studies, and more. Just go to familyradio.com and click on Audio Archives. Let's continue now with another question. Uh, good evening, Brother Camping. I have a question about salvation, please. Yes. Um, I have a, my question is, um, suppose uh, we have a person that uh, deeply desires salvation, and he recognizes that only God could save him. And he pleads and begs with God for salvation, but he re- dies unsaved. Was that because he was not one of God's elect? Yes. Anyone who dies without being saved, it means absolutely that person was not one of God's elect. Uh, the Bible t- indicates that there were certain ones who were named in the Lamb's Book of Life, and therefore God obligated himself to save them. Therefore, at some time in their life, before they died, or before the end of the world comes, whatever comes first, uh, they will have become saved. But if they did not become saved, it means they were those who were not named in the book of life, as we read in, for example, in Revelation 13. Uh, Brother Kevin, could you please pray for my salvation, please? I'm sorry? Could you please pray for my salvation? Well... Uh, the fact is that uh, uh, many, perhaps many people will be praying on this program. We don't take prayer calls because uh, we, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we want to make this a teaching program, but, but also pray for your own. My prayer, incidentally, I want to make a point here. The fact that I'm a Bible teacher does not mean that when God hears my prayers, they're more important than somebody else's. That just is not true. We all stand on the same ground, and we all can come boldly to the throne of grace. And you, too, can plead with God and beg God, and God wishes you so to do. Uh, Plead with him and beg him for salvation. God will listen. Now, whether he saves you or not, that's God's business, but you certainly uh, don't want to give up, uh, uh, cease, uh, you don't want to cease praying to God and and begging for him for his mercy because God is a very merciful God. Good evening, Brother Kempin. Um, Can you tell me where the scripture is where Jesus Christ says, we shall do greater works than these? Uh, Yeah, he said that in John... In the Gospel of John, maybe was it John? It's it's in the Gospel of John that we read that, that the work I do ye shall do, and greater work shall ye do. And God is not referring to miracles or something, because nobody uh, did uh, uh, has been able to do miracles like Jesus did, like raising the dead and walking on water, multiplying the loaves and the fish. But it means that Christ came uh, to do the work of bringing the gospel, and yet it was very ineffective because very few became saved. Uh, And we read that in uh, Luke 4. Let me turn to that a moment. In uh, Luke 4, we read uh, uh, in verse 43, And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. But now when, when we bring the gospel, it's the same work that Jesus was doing, but it's a greater work because so many people become saved as we faithfully share the gospel. And that is what God had in view when he said that ye will do the work that I do, and greater work shall ye do. Oh, yeah, because a young lady, was she was trying to make the example in that scripture that um, um, as, as for being slain in the spirit, we will also uh, slay people in the spirit like Jesus Christ did. And I see now that's not um, what it is. So yeah. I thank you. Um, one more thing. Uh, I was wondering if, um, is it a Santa box? Oh, is, you're, you're asking about boxing? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, but you remember, what is the purpose of boxing? Now, all you have to do is look at what is the purpose of boxing. What is the 
what is the ideal if you're going to be a successful boxer? What makes you the number one boxer in the world? How many knockouts you are able to accomplish? And what is the purpose of a knockout? To injure that other man sufficiently so that he gets a mild concussion uh, and he is unconscious momentarily. He's on the floor for the count of ten. Now that is not uh, that is not in agreement with the conduct of a true believer that we're out to injure our fellow man. Uh, the whole idea of boxing is uh, is uh, uh, from uh, uh, something that is satisfactory to man's idea of pleasure, but it has nothing to do with being pleasing to God and. There's no way that anyone can justify boxing as a as a as something that is God glorifying. Hey, good evening, sir. How are you? Very well, thank you. Uh, well, I've been checking website lately, uh, especially the section where the Bible is, because I'm uh, I possess. Uh, uh, Russian translation of the Bible, and I'm trying to uh, see how much accurate is my Bible versus your Bible. I have uh, a few problems with uh, with the order of the books. I know it's, uh, I mean, the text and the interpretation is accurate. Uh, it's fair, fair enough, uh, and I have no problem with that. But the uh, uh, first question is, why would the order of the books would be would be slightly different to the King King's name. That that's the first question, and then I have another one. Well, I think if you are looking at the Tanakh, the Jewish Old Testament, uh, you will find the same books in it that we find in our King James Bible, but the order may be slightly different. And uh, I don't know why that is, and I don't think it is serious at all, uh, because the uh, the uh, uh, as long as the words are all the words of God, whether the order was slightly changed, I don't think that makes any difference in the in the value or the uh, substance or the authority of the words that are spoken. So I would not consider that a problem. However, if you're looking at a Bible that has other books in it than uh, that we find in our King James Bible, and there are Bibles, you know, that have uh, books like... Uh, uh, Judith and uh, and Ecclesi- Ecclesiasticus and uh, and uh, so on uh, the so-called hidden books uh, you, that that is a that is a wrong Bible you don't want anything to do with that. I uh, I, I think I think the Bible in that respect is pretty accurate as far as uh, as far as having all the complete books and because uh, uh, I, I I checked very carefully uh, you know. Uh, I, I had done, uh, I think, a very good job with that, uh, like comparing Bible to Bible, and they came uh, to me from my father because he was uh, uh, slightly uh, suspicious as far as Bible text being accurate uh, to many uh, different Bibles, and uh, yet he haven't yeah. found anything. I mean, he passed away. Well, and now what you want to do is is get a King James Bible and remember that's the Word of God, and start reading it and getting acquainted with it. You don't spend your time checking out the Bible. Uh, and, you know, there are books, many books that have been written that critique the Bible uh, about this and about that. And, and all of that is by, done by people who don't understand that the Bible is the Word of God. And, uh, and we don't examine the Bible like anybody's book that has been written. They are looking at it only as a compilation of a lot of books that various individuals wrote and put together and called the Bible. And that's just not what the Bible is. And I would recommend that you just read the Bible and try to and pray for wisdom and obedience to what you find there. No, but uh, I'm, I'm not saying that, uh, I'm, not, I'm not spending my time checking the Bibles, but what I'm trying to say that I was trying to check if my Bible compared to the King's James Bible, is, is, is actually accurate enough because uh, I, I've been studying for, you know, for quite a while. But this is not the, uh, this is just a, um, uh, you know, a little uh, pre, um, uh, pre-story. But here's the question. I, I checked the King's 
uh, you have uh, uh, the Bible uh, text version on the Internet. And I'm just curious, why would Satan's and uh, the name of hell, uh, literally hell, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the letters and the, the word Satan, would, would be capitalized? I mean, same as uh, well, now, God. Be, be bear in mind that in the original language, there were not capitals and lowercase letters. Uh, they were all uh, the, the same. They were all uh, capital letters in the Hebrew language. And uh, and so we uh, we uh, uh, but when the uh, translators translated it, when they came to a word like God or a word like Satan, then they capitalized it uh, because that's what that's the way we write our our language. But uh, but uh, the, the important thing is the word and not the fact that the first letter is capitalized. 